This is Dr. Lewis Blevins at Pituitary World News. Today's MRI is that of a patient who had an enlarged pituitary gland. And you can see that here. This is the mid-sagittal section. The cerebral aqueduct is over here. It's the visual pathways in the pituitary stalk. This is the pituitary gland. This black space is the sphenoid sinus. Back of the throat here. This is bright spot here is the posterior pituitary gland, and this is a feature that we look for on all MRI scans. You will not usually see this in patients who have complete diabetes insipidus. Anterior pituitary looks enlarged. We can go to the coronal section. And you can see here is the pituitary, it appears enlarged. Again, we find the pituitary by looking for the cross section through the carotid siphon. It's a turn in the blood vessel that when cut through is gonna look like two pipes. You can see the upper pipe and the lower pipe and that's here on this side and here on this side. Easiest way to find the pituitary is to find those cuts through the carotid artery and the pituitary will be in the middle. This is the sphenoid sinus here. Then go a little bit more anterior and you see the sphenoid sinus is larger. So this is a pre-contrast scan. And this study illustrates the benefit of doing contrast enhancement. As we discussed in a prior video, contrast passes through and, and contrast is in the blood. So the blood passes through the normal pituitary gland before it passes through a tumor. And this is because of the way the blood supply to tumors is derived and designed. So when we progress through this scan, we start to see our carotid arteries, the carotid siphon. Here's the pituitary region we were looking at before. And perhaps best seen on this image, the brightness here is the normal pituitary gland. It's shoved over towards the left aspect of the cella. And this relatively hypo-enhancing area is the pituitary tumor. This is tumor, tumor, more tumor. It's best shown on this image, I think. Normal pituitary gland crowded out of the way towards the left, pituitary tumor in the right aspect of the cella. This area is called the cavernous sinus. It's where the loop of the carotid is seen. It's where there are a different collection of veins. There's a couple layers of dura, maybe some very, very thin microscopic layers of bone. This is all cavernous sinus. Pituitary tumors often invade this region. <clears throat> and um, this tumor, as you can see, is extending sort of a little bit between where the carotid arteries are. We don't know that tumors are definitely invasive unless they completely encircle one of these carotid arteries. Uh, some tumors simply compress the wall of the pituitary socket and push it into the cavernous sinuses. Remember, it's a blood-filled sponge-like space, so it can be compressed just as a sponge can be compressed. And that compression would be by the pressure of the tumor denting it in. One of the things that Dr. Kunwar will look for is this contrast here, just as contrast there, represents contrast in the blood. And when you see th this is cavernous sinus blood, and this is usually venous blood, uh, flowing blood in an arter artery usually doesn't show up because it's so fast, so you have a void signal. So the carotids are black, the blood vessels up here, the anterior cerebral vessels, some of the middle cerebral vessels over here, they are all black because they have flowing blood. Air is black as well because there's nothing there. Uh, but this venous blood has, is a low-pressure system, whereas the tumor is a high-pressure system. 
And as long as the pituitary tumor is contained within the cella or within the dura of the cella, the pressure is contained within the cella and not in the cavernous sinus. Once you start seeing tumor invading the cavernous sinus, that pressure in the cella and within the tumor is actually transmitted to the cavernous sinus and you start seeing compression of that sponge or that blood. So one of the things we often look for is this is the oculomotor nerve. It's one of the main nerves that controls eye, eye movement. And you can see here there is an area of blood or contrast between the tumor and that nerve. So this suggests that this tumor probably is not invasive, even though some would look at that and see that it's perhaps in the cavernous sinus. We believe it's probably compressing the cavernous sinus wall and thus is a tumor that probably can be removed in its entirety. And we won't know for sure until we get in there and we're, we're gonna probably study this observation, but we see this repeatedly. If we can see blood between tumor and the nerves, et cetera, it's probably not invading. It will of course touch the carotid artery because that's a higher pressure system probably than the tumor. Uh, but when we see cavernous venous blood between the tumor and and other soft tissue structures in this area, it suggests that that tumor is really probably not invasive. This is a really great gentleman who actually has acromegaly and has probably had it for 20 years. All the classic symptoms and signs of the disease process, unchecked for 20 years of multiple colon polyps, sleep apnea, severe sweating, arthritic complaints, facial changes, enlargement of hands and feet, etc. cetera. Um, so it's a fascinating patient, excellent MRI to show you the benefits of pre and post contrast studies. And you don't need a dynamic study for this. This is so obvious, you know, in, in many cases for tumors this size anyway, dynamic studies don't provide any extra utility. They're better looking at patients with microadenomas all right, this is Dr. Lewis Blevins of Pituitary World News. I hope you enjoyed looking at this MRI with me. Have a great day.